Y'all all looking at me like crazy? Hey, first off, we have uh, Mr. Eric, and then we have Mr. Paul in the Blanco paper. You know why? Because both of them are going to be head of the water in Blanco and Gillespie County because we know how to handle the living water around this church. You know what I'm saying? How you like them apple? Put that in my office. You see, God, God just does some amazing things, man. What, what good men to have in a community, and we have a ton of good men in our community. And that's how you build a solid church right there. You know what I'm saying? But we're proud of them. I'm proud of you this morning. It's a beautiful day. Can somebody say amen? amen. Boy, God, I had three words. My mother-in-law brought me about six messages. She's going to go over with me tonight, and I had a whole lot to choose from. But guess what? The Lord gave me one other one. I might as well call it day 41.2, but we're just going to go with it. You know what I'm saying? This one is another one. Who's been praying for something major to happen in their life? Because God's saying he got the word for it today. Somebody been reaching out because he told me I got something, a miracle, and this is faith number two, week number two. So he put, totally pulled me off my schedule and said this is for somebody today. So all I know is you better listen intently. But the sermon is called He's Got You. Yes, it's a little slangy, you know how we get down. He got you. He got you, bro. What do you want to say? The Lord has your back. He has your sides. I mean, any way you want to say it, he's got you. Can we all understand that? Okay. I know that sometimes you can't understand what I'm saying, but you'll learn street terminology as I go on. It's not Ebonics. It's Texonics and ghetto and ranch, and it's all mixed together. So... I want to pray this morning, but first, before I do that, I want to thank all that gave, donated, and served yesterday. I, I can't tell you. This is year four. Y'all kept telling me three years, but we did we did one only four and five months into year one, so it's year four. And so we did one. We did 131. We got four more that we did last night. So we're actually going to reach 140, I believe, by the time we go to middle school. So we did 40 more, 50 more than we did last year. Come on, somebody. But it was amazing. Uh, huge blessings. I know you guys are going to be blessed, too. Uh, let's give a hand for all the servants, man. All the people that donated and served, some of you couldn't be here, but you, you were with us, your church fam and spirit, and I'm telling you right now, it was amazing. And uh, those are the days that you just feel real good in your heart and you tear up going home because you know you did what the gospel commanded you to do. God wants the little children to come to them, and that's it. Jesus loves them. That's why I can't stand when children get attacked in this world, man. It infuriates me. And so those are the days that, that, we, that, we, that we got saved for. Those are the beautiful days we can look back upon and say we were such a blessing and Jesus flowed out of us and that love rested upon them people and they took it home. Come on, somebody. But thank you. You know what? I didn't have to have no, like I said on social media, I didn't have no pumped up speeches. I didn't have to sit here and call people. I didn't have to have a sign-up sheet. All I know is my servants sewed up and they went off because Jesus said, all I know is I taught them the correct way. Because I taught you, you little monkey, the correct way too. So when you just step into something like that, you don't have to have uh, uh, any pumped up to get you doing that. That means you're flowing in what God has you flowing in. And so you're there. Be encouraged today. Thank you once again. And once again, man, I am so uh, encouraged. And I want to honor you who serve. You are honored in my heart today. And God honors you in heaven and applauds you today. So I'm just, I'm so excited. But y'all ready for the word? I don't know if I'm ready because I keep writing these things on Saturday nights and I'm a planner. Uh, but the Holy Ghost said, well, we're going to do something different this year, boy, because you got, I got to got you by the seat of the britches. You know what I'm saying? So um, let's get into the word, man. We've been pumping out faith and this is going to be another one. You will be highly encouraged today. If you're asking for that miracle, best believe it's coming. If you can just believe by faith in Jesus today and hear his words and step into them. Ask the Holy Spirit to open your heart and soak it up. But see, never forget when we sing that song, when we see a battle or an ab obstacle in front of us, that God says, I've already got the victory and I've already made the way. I don't think we have comprehended that in his word. He said, look, it doesn't matter what they are saying. It doesn't matter what he says. Come on, somebody. It doesn't matter what the doctor says. It doesn't matter what the projections say. My word of God tells me that I am healed, that I am going to live an abundant life in Christ, and that all I got to do is understand one thing. He's got me. Amen. Joshua 119. Y'all better buckle up, kind of sit down in your seat a little bit because this passage is going to be a little lengthy. 
Uh, Joshua 1, 1 through 9. I'm going to break it down, so don't trip. After the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, the Lord said to Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' assistant, Moses, my servant, is dead. <laughs> he came up to that young man and said, your, your guy that mentored you has died. What's up? I got a lot of people out here, bro. You got to do something today. And see, you're going to lead, read this passage totally different today. And Moses, my servant, is dead. He said, now therefore arise, go over this Jordan, you and all this people into the land that I'm giving to them, to the people. How would you like God to wake you up on a Monday morning and say, what's up? Hey, man, homeboy died. I need you to take these million people across that river by faith and fight the giants and all that. Because that's what they're telling you. Are you about this life? Okay, let's see what's up. So then he said, into the land that I am giving them to the people of Israel. Every place at the... Oh, it gets good now. Every place at the sole of your foot. Come on, somebody. Tread upon. I have given to you just as I promised to Moses. Now that's a super solid start to a talk with God. He goes, it's all right. Homeboy's dead. He's in heaven with me. My angels came and scooped him up. The devil didn't get him. Listen, you got to cross over with these people. I need you to be strong, bro, today. Right? And this is how the story's going down. And, that, and that's a super solid start, though, because he said, I'm going to give you everything where your feet hits is yours. From the wilderness, I said, okay, Monday morning, I, I can handle that. Come on, man, y'all got to amen me this morning. And from the wilderness in this Lebanon, as far as the great river, the river Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites to the great sea towards the going down of the sun, come on, somebody, shall be your territory. That means all the way from the east to the west that you could see. That was a desert area you could see, baby. He said, oh, that, 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 that region, that region all the way to the sun. That's what I'm claiming on souls because it's going to happen. That's a lot of territory, baby. We are territory bound to conquer this because the Lord said we already got the victory and I've already made the way. These promises get really good. He said in verse 5, No man shall be able to stand before you all the days of your life. David said, Who do I fear, man? I don't fear no men. Watch it, I fear men. All I'm going to fear is the one thing I should fear, and that's the heavenly, mighty, almighty, living God. And then he said, Just as I was with Moses, I will be with you. Now, this is a great talk. And then he said, I will not leave or forsake you. Come on, somebody. And then he says, be strong and courageous. For you shall cause this people to inherit the land that I swore to your fathers to give them. We are riding on the, uh, the anointing of people that came before us. Do you understand that? And then, but there's a fresh anointing in them. When that compounds, there will be a mighty move coming. Generational move. I'm talking about generations that had faith are going to compound into this move. And you'll see a mighty move. And the, 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 the realms of hell and the enemy forces will not be able to contain this. And then he said, for you shall cause this people to inherit the land that I swore to them. When God swears to you, better check yourself. That, that, that don't mean, oh, yeah, it might have. That, that don't mean, oh, I promise you. That means I'm swearing to you. God is being real clear on these promises of how faith works too. He said, only be strong and very courageous. Well, be careful according to do all the law that Moses, my servant, commanded you. Do not turn from the right hand or to the left that you may have good success wherever you go. He said, all you've got to do is follow God's word and the guidance of the Holy Spirit because it will line up with God's word and you'll have good success wherever you go. What you worried about? He says, I got you. I'm inside of you. The power of the resurrection. Christ is in you. He said, better follow God's word, man. Eight, the book of the law shall not depart from your mouth. That word don't leave your mouth. When the devil comes and you start quoting the word, say, Lord, I'm going to tell you right now, by your stripes I'm healed. He said, man, I'm, you are going to supply all my needs according to your riches in Christ Jesus. you got to start hammering the word. If you want to get healed, ask Miss Angie. She'll print you off something, Pastor Larry. There's about 150 healing verses. They coincide with New Testament and Old Testament. You can get, all you got to do is read that every morning. You get your healing. You ain't got to have nothing else. He's still promising, but there are rules to it. In verse 9, have I commanded you, come on, that you be strong and courageous. Do not be frightened. Do not be dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. That means his presence is covering you like the shut cloud by day and fire by night. 
Y'all don't understand the power that we have with the presence of God surrounding us. It says, oh, we, I'm just all pumped up. I'll get back to that. I don't want to skip ahead. The only stipulation is one thing. You have to do an action. The only rule is you must have full faith in Jesus. And then he says, to do it, all you got to do is be strong and very courageous. Is that a new take? Well, everybody can tell you and preach you to cross over, but when you break it down like that, now you know what's up. Do not be frightened and do not be dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. That should sum it all up when you get up in the morning and you lay your head down at night. Come on. Moses came to the edge of the promised land, then Joshua took over. God had a plan of the promised land for the next generation, but Moses didn't see it too. That's a whole other message. We'll get to that at the rest of the year. There's, but listen, God's plan is different for each of us, yet the same as believers because the gospel always brings you back to the same factor. Just trusting and serving Jesus. It's that simple. And it says, I also believe that the true church and a remnant of faithful believers will step into a similar situation in the near future. And it says, uh, I was reading, and I'm not going to break this down, but the Bible said that, that, that we're going to step into a large place. Well, you could take that and break that down into anything. That could be your healing. That could be your finances. That could be your legacy of your family. That could be your whole household shall be saved. There is a whole lot of things you could break down, but I want to break down one thing. And it says, I believe the word, it says a large place, and I believe in this next move of God, that's where the church is going to be. Uh, maybe I'm not, maybe I'm not, maybe being too specific here. I think he's going to bring to the church a true remnant of believers. There's going to be an anointing that will change the world. That social media cannot change, that the media cannot spin, that you cannot deny that there is a living God, and you better get ready for it. And he says, I truly believe this. The next move of God will be such a powerful one that we will see multitudes and multitudes that have been in the, in the valley of decision come to our sweet Savior. I believe it. And I believe it ain't about church growth no more at that time. It's not about projected 10 years down the road of facilities and planning like that. It's how big can we get it to the souls that are going to flood in. And it's coming. It may have to go outdoors with it. Who gives a rip? Cut down the walls and let's rip. I don't even care, man. The cats and the rats done got saved, so they done left. They done went to the other. Anyway, the church and hall and each believer better rise up in a new, fresh base. We all better because persecution is coming too. Oh, y'all ain't hear no pastors preach about that, have you? Oh, but let me explain something to you. Go on and turn it on ESPN, Fox, NBC, and all that mess. I'm going to tell you, you best prepare yourself. Grace will abound more than sin. But you better prepare yourself. And I'll tell you why. It says, uh, it says God is moving in this nation right now, but you ever thought it might get real bad? Re you ever thought it might get real bad? Real, real bad? Real, real bad. So tons of souls can come to Jesus. You best not be thinking about your own understanding. You see, this is real faith I'm preaching here today. We don't know God's plans. We don't know. I'm just saying you best be prepared. God might, Jesus might come tonight, and I'm out. Man, the bill collectors and IRS. <laughs> Where'd he go? <laughs> I'm on farm road to heaven like my sign said, baby. You see, this is real faith. I also believe it would it, be so powerful, this move, that we will, they will not be able to deny the heavenly anointing coming from heaven. We are declaring some things today. So as a nation, and uh, sorry, as a pastor of this church that's going pretty strong, you can understand why this passage touches my heart. Verse 7, back to it, do not turn to the right nor the left, that you may have good success wherever you go. You cannot falter. You cannot get off the trail, bro. You get off the trail, you get in the bind, don't you? We go hiking in Colorado, you better stay on the trail where the little kids are. Them kids know what time it is. They can run and everything, and I'm over there about to throw up. But if you get off the trail, you're really going to throw up. I learned that too. So you got to stay in God's will. And in this passage, God is telling Joshua, just do what I told you to do. He said, arise and go. To not look over uh, to the side, to the left. Don't look at the water, uh, the way it's rising down there. Don't look at it coming to the left. Don't look at the big uh, grasshoppers and giants over there. Look, I didn't ask you to do all that. I said, arise and go. Because homeboy's dead. 
and there's people that need to be taken care of. He had a decision to make. Look how many times in a row the Lord tells him to be strong and courageous. It's amazing. Read it again. I think the thing that caught my attention, though, was studying this word, and this is where the kind of I'm getting to, is God is telling Joshua, this is a promise to you personally, boy. Who wants that promise here for that miracle they've been... Hey, I'm, I'm just telling you. I don't think you understand the Lord was personally talking to Joshua with some amazing, highly encouraging, reiterating and repeating promises of the loving God. Be strong and courageous. Be strong and be very courageous. Bro, get up, go strong, arise and go. I, how many times he got to say it? And then he says, I don't think we fully understand this either. The Lord is saying clearly, and this is, uh, you know what? I, th this Lord gave me this in the office. He said, I made a promise to you for somebody. He said, you never step into it. I got you. My promises never waver. Do they ever change? I've repeated myself many times like I did Joshua, but no more. Go move by faith. He don't have to tell you the sixth time. He told Joshua four times to be courageous and go. He said, I'm not going to tell you no more. My word stands clear. My mouth speaks. It's Go. And that's the word that he gave for somebody today. He said, I repeated myself just like I did, Joshua, but no mo go. Man, thank you, Lord. Where was I? Oh, when it hit me in prayer, I studied further, and I came to the realization that we are just letting the promises of God sit there. Uh, I, did y'all catch that? If a promise of the word of God is in there and you're just letting it sit there, then it's just sitting there. You ain't doing nothing about it. So you're over here trying to get your miracle, but the promises is over there. How do you get from here to there to day 41? So I'm going to leave that there, and you can just stare at that a little bit. That's what you were asking God for. So I studied further, and I came to the realization we were just letting the promises sit there. They're sitting there. We're, there's, you know why they're sitting there? Because believers have no faith. Faithless believers. Because the world ain't going to come in here and get that beer. They will. They'll get saved. And he'll give them because he wants to give them that. But then you're sitting in here for three or four years getting stagnant. He said, no, nah, it's time to crank it back up, baby. Because I'm telling you, when you study in there, he said all them promises are sitting there just like you in that pew. Remember his words don't change. Those miraculous promises are just sitting there because of faithless believers. We have to have faith. Faith, faith, faith believers. But well, it takes, it takes faith takes actions to ignite those powerful promises. It takes actions. Faith don't work without action and action don't work without faith. It's a balance because it will not come into full fruition, listen, unless we put it to the faith and step into it in full-blown trust. That means that miracle's over there. You have to get from here to A to B. How do you get from A to B? Well, we're fixing to see. See, listen, all I know is it says, do not be frightened and do not be dismayed for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Move in faith and quit worrying about it because like he told Joshua over and over and over, you know why he did that? To get that into his spirit. Do you understand me? That means when he was done talking to him, he had the faith to get up and go. Ooh, man, something has happened in here today. Point number one, for tomorrow. Joshua 3, 5, Joshua told the people, consecrate yourselves. Listen, for tomorrow the Lord will do amazing things among you. Joshua said to the priest, take up the Ark of the Covenant and pass ahead of the people. So they took ahead. Why did he tell them to do that? That is a picture in the Bible of the Old Testament, how God's presence flows before you. He, he makes the way straight. He makes the crooked path smooth, and I'm preaching like a beast this morning. Amazing things will be done. He said, an awesome promise, God's presence goes before us like the verse just stated. Consecrate yourselves. What does that mean? Get it together, man. Clean it up. Here's the faith action. Make or declare sacred your life and dedicate it formally to God's powerful purpose. Because the world purpose you've been chasing ain't been doing nothing for you. But causing you more money, you get behind them bars like I did, you put them razor blades on your wrist, you put the mocker up to your head. Let me explain something to you. That is hopeless. Jesus is the only hope you will ever need and have to have. It, it ain't no need. It's a necessity in this world. So holiness is, holiness is concentrating yourself. Look, sin must go. Do I have to end? I mean, yeah, we'll break that down, but sin has got to go. You know, tell Jesus, help me, man, make me better every day. You ain't going to be uh, Mr. Uh, clean Britches the next day. Let your underwear don't stink. Well, some people think that's how you roll as a Christian, but it don't work that way. You know what I'm saying? So sin just falls, look, sin just falls off. 
Y'all ain't, y'all ain't understanding the power of the Holy Ghost in you, in you that sealed you up. Sin just falls off of you when you want that. And when you draw close, and, 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 and when you draw close to the king and you get under the sin cleanser, cleanser, come on somebody, that blood just washes that sin off of you. And step into it, into the divine purpose of your life. Change has come. Listen, we're in real faith now. Oh, yeah, we've been talking and pumping it up, but no. When you get down to the nitty-gritty, you know what I'm saying? When you get down to the brawl, you know what? It's hot. He's putting the heat on. You got to get down because you're feeling the heat. But that's all right. Stay in there and stand firm. Hold fast with them knuckles. Jesus done stirred you up. Man, I read a verse last night. It said, what are we going to do with him, Pilate? He's stirring the people up. Your life just got stirred up. Don't hate because your life got stirred up because Jesus made it better because you can't do the things you want to do no more and feel good about it. Don't hate on that. That's called blessings. That's called bringing you out of a mess into, pure, uh, into his pure presence and love and you see life in a different way and you see trees and rainbows in the river. And you see it all different. You look at your kids different. You look at your wife different. You just feel good about yourself. You know you got the victory. Man, I'm just, I just feel full of joy today. See, you are building into a solid spirit-led Christ follower and we are fulfilling the vision. Don't get that down. Don't ever make doubt about it. We are discipling fiercely to you. Y'all better check yourself. People getting filled with the Holy Ghost, man. Y'all coming up here just dropping it, serving. I ain't even got to talk to nobody. Y'all are just serving. Just, uh, yeah, I don't even have to do nothing. Get prepared and get to stepping, man. Look, God has some amazing things for you. You just got to believe that today. This is a faith message. If you can't get nothing out of this message, you need to go on down and skip it. You do, 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 to the next one. You're going to have to decide if you're going to cross over today or you're just going to keep riding the fence because Johnny Cash, like I said, made this deep quote. How well have I learned that there's no fence to sit on between heaven and hell? There is a deep, wide gulf of chasm, and in that chasm is no place for any man. Don't be in that chasm. Don't, don't leave yourself in that dynamic. Man, that man knew the truth because he lived it. Them pills ate him up, and he found Jesus at the end of his life. Do you understand me? That fame wasn't the void, that the pills wasn't the void, that the alcohol wasn't the void, that the, uh, the, the uh, affairs wasn't the void. Nothing filled it, and he finally found out it was Jesus, and he had been living in that chasm because he was called to it the whole time. Just like Elvis, just like Prince, they all know they were called by God because he left that spirit, he left those things with them. He knew they were going to have that before he was born there because they're supposed to be worshiping him. I think old Johnny Cash was miserable knowing he was living an in-between life. That lukewarm life, God says, I'll fill you up. I'm telling you today, start trusting the Lord, drop the hesitation, step into the promises. Listen, Isaiah 26, 3. This is beautiful because I've been pumping this too. You will keep perfect peace to those whose minds are steadfast because they trust in you. Now, what other verse do you need other than that too? God's got your back. He is the Prince of Peace. He gives you the powerful peace. He died on the cross to give that to you. Now that there is another amazing promise, but listen, let's get on. The powerful peace of Christ, uh, it, I'm speaking that into your life too. Just like God spoke to Joshua, be strong and courageous, be strong and courageous, go and rise, be strong and courageous. I got you. I've been speaking that powerful peace into your life as a pastor too for about five months. My question to you, what are you waiting for? Faith is stepping into full blown trust in Jesus and then you'll see what God has been trying to tell you. He's telling you to cross over. He, sees, he told all them crazy Israelites too. But he's telling you now, they hesitated. Do not hesitate. Just cross over. Cross over the river. He's telling you to cross over like them old crazy Israelites. Go ahead, I got you is what he's saying. Get excited about faith, man. Do, you got to get excited about coming to church. You got to get excited about the things of God. You cannot let the world beat you down anymore. You walk around defeated because the world whipping your butt. The Lord said, come on and cross over. Quit letting the world whip your butt out in the desert. Come to the promised land. Amen. Those blessings in that 41-day miracle right there, hang on. And God is saying he's got you covered on all sides in all areas of your life. All you've got to do is just believe that today. Point number two, step into the water. Stepping out into faith in life can be scary sometimes. We only got one life, so I'll say to get to stepping. You hear me? You got one shot at it on earth, period. When I go to heaven, I'll be like, Lord, I went hard, man. I, I mean, I went so hard, I was crawling sometimes, bro. But that's okay, because you gave me the victory every time, man. It ain't you. If you realize that you don't do life through you, you'd probably make it. Like, you'd be like coasting. 
like straight to heaven. Quit trying to do it on your own. You got one shot, man. Look, to get in the water, something must occur. You got to leave the dryness to get into the wetness. I don't know how it's going to happen. So you have to. So when you get out of the shower, you have to take stuff off. You got to change things up. You got to step into a new element. I'm preaching a little. Are y'all with me? But it don't matter. Let's just skip over that. Sometimes you got to step out. Sometimes you fall out. <laughs> Sometimes you give out in life. But that's still an action. I gave out. I fell out. I cried out. And Jesus said, here I am. And he's changed me forevermore. Just as Joshua and the people approached the raging Jordan River after wandering the desert for 40 years, that must have been real scary too. Because listen, 40 years in a dry desert, then approaching a raging river with an unknown land in front of you with bad spy reports. The flooding Jordan River was a huge obstacle before they reached God's promise. The yearly flooding, you know that was chronicled for generations, and at the time it was such a huge rumor, they already knew that there was the harvest flood. They already knew that they were in a bind. They knew that if the enemies caught, caught them out there, that they were in a bind because they were trapped up against the Jordan River. See, they were thinking, they were trying to handle it by themselves, though, out in the desert. I, I, let, let, now, I'm, do, I, do I have to simply break that down? You out there in the world trying to break stuff down. You out there trying to provide for yourself. You're trying to put your legacy in your future. You have no room for God. Where did you leave God in that? Where, did, where was he in that decision making? That's my question to you. So how is that plan going to work out for you when you don't leave God in any decision making and you already built your future? Pretty stupid. Joshua 3.14, so when the people broke camp to cross the Jordan, the priest carrying the Ark of the Covenant went ahead of them. We already talked about that. God's presence is in front of you always. You just seem to forget that all the time. He told the priest to step into the water, the scary raging waters, high flood stage water to be exact. You want to see yourself and your family's life change and for God to truly bless you? Are you playing games? Because listen, you better prepare to step out into faith. The time has come. All new aspects in your life must let God be a part of every decision now. You must hear God in the moment, every day now. Let me say that again. That's how you have to be so tuned into the Spirit right now. It's that crucial. That crucial. You must hear God in the moment. Listen, Ben Franklin, old Ben Franklin said, by failing to prepare, you are preparing to fail. Faith works that way too. Prayer can do that. By failing to prepare, you are preparing to fail. An old pastor once told me this too. Preparation is more important than performance. Your sermon suck. Now go uh, wash the uh, or go scrub the toilets. Y'all ain't ready for that discipling though. Y'all might get hurt and never come back to church. You know what I'm saying? But see, plan, prepare, and pursue. That's faith also even more than you realize. Ephesians 6.13, therefore put on of every piece of God's armor so you'll be able to resist the enemy in the time of evil. Do you think we're in the time of evil? Have you been putting your spiritual armor on daily like you should? That you have not been doing what you have been need to do in the time of evil? And then it says, then after the battle you will start standing firm. Come on, somebody. See, he said, they, y'all, did y'all catch that promise? That means you'll, let, you'll be standing. What does that say? After the battle, you will still be standing firm. He already gave you the victory. He's got you, whatever you're going through. If it's meth, if it's at, it don't matter what it is. If it's, a, if it's a disastrous marriage, I don't care what you're going through. If your grandpa got cancer, just call out to him. He says, here I am. Day 41 looks different for each of us. Day 41 looked different for Moses, but he got to see it. Day 41, is now it looks like he's preparing Joshua for his day 41. Come on, somebody. This is called the testing of your faith. This is how you follow Christ. You see his abide in me. That, what does that mean, abide in me? All that means is all you got to do is go through life with one thing, just pursuing his presence. If you can just pursue Jesus' presence continually, then you don't have to worry about nothing in life. Because when them tribulations come, you'll be so tight. You'll be so tight to the king. You'll be so firm in faith that they'll flow over you and it'll be like water off a duck's back. Churching it up. That's another thing. What does that mean? I don't know. I just made it up last night. It's called you are about your local tur- turned up on fire church and you love your church fan full of love and you love others that come in. That's called churching it up. So my new hashtag, Sundays, we're churching it up, baby. 
John 15, 7, if you abide in me, if you just seek my presence, that's all you got to do. Then he says this, my words abide in you. <laughs> and then he says, you will ask what you desire and it will be done for you. How many promises have I just dropped out of the Word of God that was so simple? And do you know how many thousands and millions or more are in the Word of God? You just got to find them. Plan. Here we go. Plan, prepare, pursue. Plan is to follow Christ no matter what. Prepare. Seek His presence and guidance always. Pursue. Seek first His kingdom, then all things will be added. How simple is that? Let me say it one more time. Prepare, pursue. Our plan, prepare, and pursue by faith. See, we must pray and spend time with the Lord. If you're not doing this, then I'm asking you to start that today. And, 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 and I've asked you till I'm blue in the face. You have to build a relationship with Jesus or you don't know him. You cannot come say a token prayer, shake the little hobbit preacher's hand and go home and crank it up. I mean, <laughs> there has to be some heartfelt change. You know, people say, I got saved because I, ch- I, I, I shook the Presbyterian and then they sprinkled me with some water and stuff when I was like three months old. Now, come on, man. Dude, you've been living like a heathen. You've been to prison 16 times like I have in 18 counties. What are you doing? That baptism did not stick, homeboy, and your salvation was not real. But I'm here to tell you it can be real right now. Because he took those nail scars right here and there and there. He took all those pain pill hurts and those razor blade cuts when I was bleeding out and the EMS had to save me in front of my daddy. Let me explain something to you. Jesus said, that is not for you. You chose that. You were not, you did not go and arise like I told you and was strong and courageous. You chose to be weak and go against me and go with the world. He says, go this way now and cross over. Matthew 6, 6, but when you pray, go to your room, close the door and pray to your father who is unseen. Then your father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. A prayer is vital in this move. From the old into the new things, not just this move of God we're in now. Prayer will get you from the old things to the new things. You get me? It said, and then it says, from the old season of your life to the new season God has for you. Prayer is that corridor. Why? Because real prayer is that relationship building time with Christ. You can break down prayer all you want. You can battle in prayer. You can intercede. You can just pray. You can be still. You can listen. You can do all you want in prayer. There's tons of things to do. But really, it's just the presence of Jesus. And then he just moves because you just have the faith at that moment. And then heaven starts, come on, somebody, changing things on earth. (laughs) Plus, you're moving heaven to change earth because God loudly hears the prayers of a righteous man and woman. Come on, man. This personal relationship and quiet time with the Lord is so essential. Then the Holy Ghost will lead you into prayer. And so many areas just tap into that. It takes faith and, and prayer builds faith. It takes faith, but prayer builds faith. It takes faith to steady, step into the Word and study it, really study it. But it, the faith it builds will take you to such amazing levels. Listen, snuggle in there close to the arms of the King. He's got you covered. Y'all ready for point three? Step into those promises. Somebody shake themselves. We're fixing the end. Point three. Y'all got to wake up. Here we go. James 1.22. But be doers of the word and not hearers only deceiving yourselves. Joshua had a decision to make. Be a doer of what God said. Listen. Or let the opportunity pass him by. Don't let God think. You've let that happen a lot in life because you did not have him in the decision making. You, your faith was not focused on him. Your faith, those things maybe not did come into fruition because you had no faith in the one that can make that happen. You have to change that element. You're going to be all about this faith walk in life or just lay back and have regrets? I know a lot of Christians that have regrets. They say, I just did not know. I was in church for 27 years and I just did not know the word of God was like this. I said, I'm sorry. But now you might know. I can't help that. You've got to grab hold of God's promises. That's why you've got to get in the Word yourself because that's the only way you can get from point A to point B to the day 41 miracle. God brought Joshua over the Jordan River into the promised land, but there were things that had to be done before making that move. Listen, Joshua had to first listen to the Lord. He had to obey the Lord. And then he said he had to clean it up. Then he had to get back on track. And then his faith had to take action. Pretty crazy. Faith comes alive by obeying. And God 
then can move mightily. You have to obey to see the miracle. You have to obey to see the miracle. Rise up and walk. Pick up your mat and walk. Be clean. Go and clean yourself to the priest. And then you got to go. You got to arise. Come on, somebody. You got to get under that presence in that anointing, Miss Pauline. And you got to believe that that miracle already happened three months ago. He's going to blow a fresh pneuma of the Holy Spirit, the pneuma into your lungs. I'm believing that. And he's going to, when that comes in there, that supernatural, miraculous power of Jesus Christ to transform them lungs. I'm believing that. I believe in that for multiple people in here. My iPad went dead. Please excuse me. I'm going to wrap this up. All right, guys. Where were we at? Point three, right? Good. I needed a breather anyway, and y'all needed to wake up for a second. Let me get this together, and we'll wrap this up. You know, God brought Joshua over the Jordan River into the promised land, but there were things that had to be done before he made that move. And I just said that. Faith came alive by obeying, and then God moved mightily. The obeying is the part of faith that you have to step into, and then he can move mightily. It said obedience to him unlocks the miracles that you've been praying and believing for. I hear it all the time. Listen to this. I'm just waiting on God to move in my life, Pastor. Well, let me clue you in on something. He's been waiting you to step into faith for a long time. Mm. Yep, I said that. Stepping into a place of uncertain and trusting solely in Him. That's how miracles and blessings occur, my peeps. You have to start looking at life through eyes of faith. You have to start looking at your life through the eyes of Jesus. When Jesus woke up, he didn't see no obstacles. That boy, he just walking by healing people. Be healed. Fig tree die. Rise your mat up and walk. Come on, y'all come kick it with me because I'm going to love on y'all this morning because y'all are pretty cool people. And we'll hang out and all the haters are going to say I hang out with sinners and Republicans. But really what I'm doing is showing you how cool I am because I just want to hang out with you because I love you. Do You see, there is a big difference. Let me get back on track. Many of you have been coming and hearing the Word of God and your faith has been enlarging, no doubt. You're getting a new outlook, new aspects, and new faith on life. And we've been going over faith so powerfully on Sundays lately. And life is taking on new meaning in many ways. Step into that faith. Grab a hold of it today. You've been hearing it. Your faith is there now. Faith comes by hearing the Word of God. You've heard enough of foundational Word of God. Now it's time to step into it. They said He needs to be able to trust. You know, God needs to be able to trust you too. I ain't never heard nobody preach that, bro. I'm serious, man. God just gave me that. He said, man, I got to be able to trust you too. Because if you can't get up and arise and go and step over, then I can't stop the floodwaters and halt them. See, I already got the way made. I guess I, all I got to do is say, it's up. But you won't rise and go. Well, that way is just going to fade away. It, this miracle over here, day 41, because nobody stepped in that promise, it's just going to go back right where it was. Told you it was a good one on faith. See, either back to that old life or to cross over into the promised lands of God's promises. And look, man, don't look at the obstacles in front of you ever. Look, you must look past to see God's promise. If I looked at all the obstacles, I'd look at this ugly, rusty, stained Sears store that smelled like doo-doo, dead rats, and crickets. I didn't see that. I saw lost souls coming. I saw people weeping. I saw people getting healed up here on this floor. I saw people on the altar. I saw marriage counseling happen. I saw kids in the nursery when I was painting. I saw Jesus building legacies and families. I saw the vision being accomplished that he put on our hearts, and now you got it. And if it happened to be the vision could go forward now, and I can go be with Jesus because y'all caught it now. Listen, he's got us either way. You're going to heaven, so who gives a rip? Faith. Find it. Step into it. Now's the time like never before. By faith, sometimes you have to take the more difficult path for the easier path to come, too. But in the end, God comes through, and you realize that all he wanted you to do was trust him because he had that way already made. Come on, somebody. 
God loves to show you his glory and power in situations look hopeless. That way he provides the hope and know he gets all the glory because he is the miracle worker, Mr. Marty. The scripture sums it all up in Hebrews eleven six, And without him, faith is impossible to please God. Because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists and he rewards those who earnestly seek him. And that is quite amazing. What an amazing... Listen to this. I've got to, I've got to show you this picture real quick. Let, let's, let's close it up. Let's see what God did as they stepped into the water by pure, pure faith and obedience. Let's close this up. Joshua 3.15 Now the Jordan is at flood stage during the harvest, like I said. Yet as soon as the priests who carried the ark reached the Jordan... Oh, man, and their feet touched the water. He already had that prepared when they were walking up there. He had that prepared before they were born. That way was made for you before you were born. That's what he showed me last night. He said, time to wake up and listen, my peeps. Listen to me, verse 16. The water from upstream stopped flowing. It piled up in a heap a great distance away. And at a town called Adam in the vicinity of Zeranath, while the water flowing down the Sea of Arabah, that is the Dead Sea, was completely cut off. So the people crossed. He said, let me explain something to you. I just didn't shut the Jordan River off when you were walking up to it. I shut the, cut the sea off a week ago, knowing that you were going to step into your miracle, baby. I'm cutting, I'm filling them lungs up with new oxygen, baby. Listen to me. you got to step into that. you got to step into that place, that large place he has prepared for you. We won't really close it down this time. He stopped the raging waters. They automatically backed up and the whole river system paused all the way from the sea. That would be like the Colorado pausing and piling up on a great heap in the city of Austin. Come on, somebody, because God said to stop. Boy, I can't wait till he starts moving on this earth. Woo, y'all thought I was fired up now. I'm going to be, I'm throwing this sucker like, woo. I Rick flaring it up. His promises made true. Miracles happen. Not only did he provide a way, he makes it easy. I don't care what you're facing today. Jesus is waiting. Call out to him and step into faith. It's time to cross over, but always you have to arise, go, and you have to step into where the water was. Was. Because when you step, it ain't going to be there no more because no more options going to be there because Jesus says, I got you. He said, will you have the faith to step out or trust God to make smooth, dry path for all that you love? Do you want them to be saved too? Because I want to say something very serious as I end. You must be believing that your entire household should be saved. Because a lot of times that you, what you really need to be thinking about in all honesty is there are people in your household that you dearly love that are going to go to hell if they die. That's what the Bible says. Don't get mad at me. The people you dearly love will be in hell for eternity. And I said that for one reason. Because this. Will you have the faith to step out and trust God to make a smooth, dry path for all those people in your life too? It's going to be up to you to step into that. Are you going to quit? Are you going to be diverted and then the floods just take all of them to hell? It's up to you. I truly believe, and I believe in each of you, I truly believe this scripture in Joshua 3, 5b. It says the Lord will do amazing things among you. And I can promise you amazing things have already been done. It's just going to get more amazing. Come on. And these aren't idle words I'm speaking today. I'm speaking God's unwavering promises. I preached His promises that stand true always and never fade. So you can stand on that message today. I promise you that. And I'll leave you with this promise again too. And this is a good one. Isaiah 43, 1b. And God spoke this to me four days ago and it has been just going through my mind like the end of a movie when the scripts are running and all the people are whatever at the end. This is how the scripture has been running through my mind and into my heart for four days. I want you to listen. It says, Fear not, Isaiah 43, 1b, for I have redeemed you. I have called you my name. And you are mine. Did you hear that? And then he says, when you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they shall not overwhelm you. 
And he's, lastly, God gave me a scripture about how he cares for us and watches us continually. And I want to leave you with this this week, Isaiah 58, 8. And this is the one that really is on my heart. It says, Then your light will break out like the dawn, and your healing or recovery will speedily spring forth, and your righteousness will go before you. The glory of the Lord will be your rear guard. Did you hear that? That means he got you. Nothing can sneak up on you if you have a rear guard. It can't. And then it says this, verse 9. This is where it gets beautiful. Then you will call, and the Lord will answer, and you will cry, and he will say, here I am. So when you see an obstacle, maybe you're coming up to a flood. Maybe you want to make the place dry to get, to get your household saved. Maybe that, 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 that doctor report was not what you wanted to hear. None of that makes a difference to Jesus. Jesus said, I've overcome the world. Period. And that's what he said. He said, the Lord is your rear guard, and if you put him first in all things, he will surely have your back in all things. But I deeply love, like I said, I'm going to read that again. And if you go back to that scripture, Eli, I'll end with this. Thank you, sir. Isaiah 43 or 9, you will call and that's fine. Then That's fine. Then the Lord will call out and the Lord will answer and you will cry and he will say, here I am. You need to rest in that tonight. You need to know that he's moving in your life. He's got you. He's got your children. You got to get in here and get Jesus, number one, into your life. Be born again. Let him be making you into a new creation. Let the Holy Ghost start working on you. Get into a super cool church like we kind of got right here where people ain't judging you and can love you and get you to the place and we can all go together. That's all you got to do, man, because God says, it's okay, just call out to me. Here I am. Beautiful. And I love how Matthew ends in this chapter. It says in Matthew 28, 29, this is, of course, the Great Commission. I don't even call it that. I call it the Gospel Commission. And it says, I lo, I'm with you even till the end of the age. That means whatever you do, whatever he tells you to go and arise and step over, that means whatever you ask, that that way has already been made. The dry ground's been prepared. The water's already heaped up miles downstream because he done cut the sea of them problems off weeks ago. Come on, somebody. All you got to do is come to him today and then change hits. So I'm going to offer that this morning, guys. And we'll pray to end the deal, but let's pray for it all. Everybody bow your heads real quick, and I want you to get real serious. The first part of this amazing journey is putting your faith in Christ Jesus, and we must stand in his strength and hope. He's the only hope in this world, guys. I'm not kidding you. There is no other. You can go to any other church. I don't care what any other church tells you. There is no other hope in this world but through Jesus Christ of Nazareth. That is it. Period. And that's why we're all in, dude. And it first starts with accepting your Lord and Savior. You must be born again. He told Nicodemus, you cannot be born of a woman to get to heaven. You must be born of the Spirit, and you must be born again. And John the Baptist says, I came to, ba- I came to baptize you with fire, but there's ones that come, and he'll baptize you with the fire. Because I've, I've got the water, but he's got the fire. So when you, re- when you get Jesus, you get sealed up with the Holy Ghost, you are sealed up with that resurrection power and that dynamite dunamis power. And then that's when the overcoming power comes to be able to defeat whatever had you down in life in your past. And then Jesus makes you a victor. Who wants that today? Who wants that today? Who wants that change today? God says, listen, I'm telling you in 2 Corinthians 5, 17, therefore if anyone is in Christ, he's a new creation. Old things are gone. Behold, new things have come. Listen, I'm going to tell you one more. God demonstrated his own love for you by when you were yet sinners. Jesus died for you on that bloody cross. And then he rose on the third day for you. Who wants that today? Ain't nobody judging you. You know what? Every one of us had to raise our hands at some point and come to Jesus. So raise them up and let's do this together. There's one, two, three, four. Come on, man. I'm here to help. Our church is here to help. Jesus got you. The Holy Spirit will be in you, sealed up, and you'll be having a new, abundant life that is going to Bring your family into a fresh legacy. Don't let the devil have your family today. Don't let the devil have your soul today. 
Don't let hell win. Let's say this prayer. And all those online, let's get Jesus in our hearts today. He is wanting to come and change your life. His love has ever, never been inseparable. He's already been making ways for you today. He knew you were going to be here this morning listening online. He already made the way. He made the way on the cross 2,024 years ago for you. Let's all say this prayer. Lord, I know that I'm a sinner. And I'm in need of you. I know you died for me on a cross. That you went to a tomb. That you died. That you rose up for me and my family that you made a way for me to heaven and you made a way for me right now on earth I ask you to bring your mercy and grace into my life to change me for real forgive me of my sins cleanse me of all those mistakes take that dirty past away and fill me up with the new fill me up with the power of the Holy Spirit I thank you for loving me and giving me new life in you. And everybody said, in Jesus' name, amen. Everybody give Jesus a hand.